bounty hunting, a dangerous profession which required a great deal of finesse and style, unless your name was Dengar. Preferring firepower and destruction, the Corellian born scoundrel, despite his scruffy looking and battered exterior, became one of the galaxy's most proficient bounty hunters. But how did he do so? How did he rise to power? Welcome to the Kankazan Star Wars Lore Episode 141 The Rise of Dengar. By 21 BBY, Dengar had cemented himself as one of the galaxy's finest bounty hunters, harbouring a respectable track record in the process. As a result, he was one of six hunters hired to transport valuable cargo to the ruler of Quarzite, or Chua Blank. However, due to the planet's atmospheric pressure, the squad had to use a sub-tram, not a spaceship. Assigned to guard the rear alongside Asajj Ventress, who he unsuccessfully flirted with, Dengar had to fight off a number of cage warriors in their quest to retrieve the train's cargo. But despite his incredible skill in hand-to-hand -hand combat, Dengar was eventually overwhelmed and thrown from the train. Suffering a similar fate, the team of bounty hunters later regrouped to discover that Ventress had betrayed the mission's objective. However, before departing Quarzite, she handed the crew their share of unmarked credits. Later in the conflict, Dengar was hired alongside Las Razi, Embo and Suji to protect the huts on Nal Hutta. Unfortunately, shortly after Darth Maul's Savage Price and Pre Vizsla attacked, they were backed up by reinforcements, forcing Dengar and company to flee. Selflessly, the Corellian used a smoke bomb to allow the beaten Embo and Suji to escape. Despite passing the prime of his career, the wavered and grizzled bounty hunter continued to operate following the Clone Wars. Favoured by Jabba the Hutt, Dengar was found more often than not in Jabba's palace. There, he encountered Darth Vader, who required additional military resources following the Battle of Yavin. Around the same time, Jabba had placed a rather large bounty on Corellian smuggler and rebel sympathiser Han Solo. Seeking such a vast fortune, Dengar travelled to Nar Shadda. However, he was subdued by Chewbacca and then stunned by Solo himself. Surviving the altercation, the bounty hunter eagerly accepted Vader's orders to track down the Millennium Falcon and his pilot. Unfortunately, despite his best efforts, Dengar lost out on the bounty to longtime rival Boba Fett, who delivered the carbonite encased Solo to Jabba on Tatooine. Following the Battle of Endor, Dengar became involved in a fight with bounty hunter Mercurial Swift. While the Corellian attempted to offer guidance to his younger counterpart, hoping he would join him in a bounty hunter alliance, Mercurial claimed Dengar was too old and ineffective. Despite holding Swift at gunpoint, Dengar was distractive and left vulnerable. However, feeling no reason to kill the bounty hunter, Mercurial let him live. But before going their separate paths, Dengar warned the youngster about their profession's future, given the New Republic's rise to power. Not long after, Dengar's prediction came to fruition. As a result of the terrorist attacks that took place on Liberation Day, the New Republic began denying services to bounty hunters. Already old and well past his prime, Dengar's future looked bleak. To learn more about Dengar's personality and equipment, click the link on screen or the one in the description. Now it's time for this week's question. Where does Dengar rank in your top 5 or top 10 list of bounty hunters? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to vote for next week's episode by participating in the card poll on screen now. Also, to have your say in future lore videos, head on over to thekangasans.com and get voting. Thanks for watching, and for more Star Wars related content, keep a look to here. To the Kangasans! The Hutts were a steady source of income for bounty hunters, and were never short of dirty deeds that needed doing. The visit coincided with that of Pantora's chairman Papanoida and his son Ion. Both men were searching for Greedo, the bounty hunter who had kidnapped Papanoida's daughters. Embo decided to not get involved with the situation, but he did return to action when summoned to fight in the box. Upon answering Count Dooku's call, Embo travelled to Sereno to prove himself in the fiendish testing ground. Out of the 12 bounty hunters who entered, he was one of the few to survive, outmanoeuvring the likes of Sinrich and Sixta. Due to their performances, Raka Hardin, Deron, Twazi and Embo were tasked with kidnapping Supreme Chancellor Palpatine. At Palpatine's appearance on Naboo, Embo and Twazi used holographic disguised matrices to pose as Senate commandos.